the other day, 4-2 away from home. Um, the result was quite surprising, I have to be honest, um, especially the manner of how we lost, because I think despite how poorly we played in the second half, I think we played pretty well the first 25 minutes or so of that game against Leicester. I thought that we saw the good and the bad of United, I think, up front in that kind of final third. We've got some proficient enough players that we can hurt teams, especially if they play open. We saw Sancho and Greenwood earlier on get forward. You know, Bruno Fernandes trying to look for Ronaldo a couple of times. Pogba really roaming around, basically leaving Matic to be the only kind of deep landing playmaker. They weren't really playing in tandem, really, for the most part, especially in that first half. Pogba was mostly on the left. <clears throat> But then we also saw the negatives where that if we do concede a goal, it feels like this team kind of knows that if we concede a goal, it puts too much pressure on the attacking players to outscore the other team. Like we're not going to shout out a team, especially a team like Leicester who kind of have a style of play. They have a way of kind of exploiting spaces. They have a way of kind of stretching our team. They have a way of just attacking in general as a team and pressing as a team that you know our players aren't going to necessarily thrive under those conditions. And to start off with the game, I think the lineup I wasn't that I wasn't that kind of I didn't have that much of a problem with. The only thing I kinda of pointed out social media was a midfield. I was kinda of worried about that three as Matic, Pogba and Bruno. more so because of the Pogba and Bruno thing. I just don't think they can play together in that kind of system. It just doesn't work. Maybe as like a flat four, a flat three, a flat five or something cool. But in that kind of triangle sort of um four three three or in that yeah, in that kind of four two three one formation, it just doesn't work. Or four two one two one, it doesn't work. It really doesn't. Um, Bruno goes wandering too much. He gets attracted to the ball. He really wants to be in the box anyway. As we saw last season, he's probably better playing as a false nine than he is playing as a number ten. He doesn't really have the ball control, ball manipulation, um, dribbling ability. Um, you know that little five yard of pace that Quartino has got to really play in that position well. He's not really a modern day number ten. He's probably more like an like a what like an eight or something. Even then, he's not the most like box to box dynamic sort of player, right? But once he gets in around that box, he's deadly, as you can see, right? His shooting is ridiculous. Um, his finishing level is ridiculous. Like it's just really really good. But as a footballer, he's just not the best. So. With those guys in the midfield and with Pogba's tendency not to be defensively disciplined, to go wandering, and obviously his ball retention skill isn't that great, even despite how big he is, he does kind of lose the ball under pressure quite often. I was really worried about that. But then I was also thinking in the back of my head, Matic and Pogba playing as a double pivot might actually work because they're both really good on a ball from those kind of deep positions. Pogba with his sprays, Matic with those kind of through the line kind of balls that he does where it kind of goes through this way, right? And Pogba kind of flings it right to left. I thought that would work in that respect. But as a t as the game progressed and we needed to defend more and there was more runners coming in and behind, I found that Pogba and, and Matic were really struggling in that position. And it kind of goes to show that if you're going to play two double pivots in that position, they have to be, in my opinion, a very proficient, high-level DM alongside one of either, you pick, I don't care who it is, Matic, no, one of either, no, yeah, let's say Matic is the, is the one that you, you pick there as a deep landing play, a deep landing defensive midfielder because we ain't got nobody else. Then you have to pick one of McTominay, Fred or Van Der Beek to play alongside him. No one else can do that role. And then the rest, and then the number 10 position has to be fought over between Bruno Fernandes and Pogba. I think they occupy the same spaces. So you have to decide who you want to play in that role or you push Pogba on the left hand side, but you don't put him in midfield. It's just not going to work. So that was obviously a concern. But the rest of that, I was okay with the lineup. And then again, 20 minutes in, we started pretty well. Well, Marcus, sorry, Mason Greenwood scored an absolutely bang of a goal for the left hand side. He just picked up as he always does when he's playing um, up front with Ronaldo. He doesn't seem to pass him too much. He just he's probably encouraged to shoot a lot by the manager, and he scored a quite brilliant goal. Um, maybe some people would argue the shooting and that scoring of a goal was a kind of um, a one off, and maybe the more he the more time often than not, when he does shoot, he does not score, right? Especially from that distance. So maybe the fact that he was shooting so much was maybe a hindrance to the other team and how we are playing. I'm not too sure. But regardless of that, he scored. We felt like we were going to get our tails up and kind of go for it from there. Then, you know, they equalised pretty 
uh, pretty well, I think, in the regards of how they were playing. Um, obviously, a mistake from us in the back with Harry Maguire, who looked horrible. He was clearly not fit. He was clearly um, carrying some sort of injury. And he clearly got rattled by the Leicester fan base. I think as soon as he made that first mistake that led to the Yuri Tillman's goal, his kind of head went down. He sort of retreated and did what normal defenders do whenever they're not confident. He just took a five yard step back. He took five yards. Um, he took five. A five yard step back, right? Is that what I say? Yeah, backwards. It doesn't being deep and then invited more pressure. And then from then on, it was only one team that was going to win this game. And then at that time, I think at half time, I said, you know what? Considering the games that we have coming up, we have Atlanta in the Champions League. I think we've got Liverpool and then Tottenham or something, right? Um, I think we've got, yeah, away in the home. I'm not too sure what, what way, good way it goes around. But basically, I was saying that. I would much rather leave this game with a draw playing against Leicester, considering how poor we are. Um, and then go into the Atlanta, Atlanta games and the Liverpool games with like a fresh, clean slate. Because more likely than not, we're probably going to turn up against Liverpool, right? Even though everyone thinks it's going to get bad, we're probably going to play really well against them. It always happens with United, especially Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Whenever he needs a result, he'll pull one out of the bag. So don't be surprised if we end up winning 4-2 against Liverpool. But then against Atalanta, I was saying that I really do worry about this team if we get knocked out of the Champions League and the likes of Varane and Ronaldo and co are having to play in the Europa League, especially after all the investments happening, especially after the divide in the fan base. I think it's going to get really toxic really quickly. So that, especially considering how easy our group was on paper. So I thought, you know what, get get our Leicester with a point. Again, we should be winning those kind of games if you want to challenge for a title. But let's be honest, we're not going to challenge for a title anytime soon. And then going to the Atlanta, Atlanta game, because of the Champions League again, knockout tournament, there's no, you know, um, there are obviously favourites, but there is still a possibility that we could do something. Do you know what I mean? So I thought maybe that could work, but it didn't work. We ended up getting embarrassed against Leicester, which is then going to put more pressure against Atalanta, which is then going to put even more pressure on the game against Liverpool. And then Tottenham, of course, they're struggling for form. They'd want to kind of show and prove against us too. And that's going to be an issue too. So it's going to be a really interesting run of games. Um, but regardless, I thought um, the substitutions were weird when they did happen. Um, the fact that Sancho is always the first player to come off and Rashford obviously was the first player to come on was, you know, um, system systematic or systemic of whatever, Oli Gunnar's reign. The fact that he has his favourites. Some players get all the leniency, some players don't. Van der Beek didn't come on the pitch. McTominay did before him to try and win the game, which is ludicrous if you, if you kind of really think about it. Um, and just Ronaldo stayed in the pitch probably too long. He was probably really ineffective, I thought, in general. Um, and just in general, I just think, the really unfortunate thing about Oli is that he had so much goodwill going into this job and clearly he's done a lot of good post Mourinho, right? The toxicity levels that existed with Mourinho were just too much to bear. And I think anyone wants a repeat of that. And obviously the Van Gaal era had its kind of, you know, had its positives, but still, um, I think overall the style of football we were playing um, it just wasn't what we wanted to see and it kind of got really boring really quickly. No problem with that one. And obviously he didn't get the support he needed. There was no football director. All this sort of stuff didn't really help his reign. But the really interesting or side thing about Oli is that it's such a wasted opportunity. He's clearly not, you know, of the elite quality that we need as a coach. But you would have imagined somebody like him would have recognised that and just brought in some high-level coaches just to help him be successful at the club. If he was so worried, because you know he always kept saying about, "Oh, I'm more worried about the club's success. It's not about me. I'm here as a servant of the club." It's like, yeah, but he's done everything to sort of like you know, keep his friends in the job, even though they're not good enough, the Carricks and McKenna's, the Mike Feelings and stuff, they're not elite coaches. They shouldn't be coaching a team of that sort of quality, especially if you want to compete with the other teams in the league. It just doesn't really make sense to me because it's clearly this way of playing of where you just get your best players and you put them in a competent formation and hope they figure it out on a pitch doesn't work. We only have one way of playing, which is counter-attacking. We don't really build out from the back that well. We don't have the players even to build out from the back. I, don't, I would say Harry Maguire and Lindelof are fairly average when it comes to playing with the ball out, out from the back with their feet. Wan Bissaka and Luke Shaw are hot and cold in that kind of department. And our attacks just don't have any rhyme or reason to them. I think when we do get the ball to a Bruno, to a Pogba, to a Sancho, to a Greenwood, they kind of figure it out. But in terms of actual building of a play system uh system systematic or systemic attacks whatever that word is we don't do that we just kind of you know our better players just figure out how to score goals in the end and i think ultimately that's going to what's going to cost him <coughs> his job and most likely the mcfred dependency is also going to cost him his job because i don't care anyone says i don't think ollie ever wanted a dm because he's been in the job for three years um 
he has not made any kind of inkling that he's going to sign one apart from Declan Rice. I've not heard of any other rumors. Again, Declan Rice is not a realistic option. Let's be, let's be real. He's going to cost upwards of like 90 million. Doesn't make any sense. So if that's the case, I've not heard of us being into <clears throat> with any other DM apart from this Trumani guy. Again, he's young. He just come out, you know, out from the blue. And I think we should be, again, kind of calm about his ability to play in the Premier League, especially after we've seen what happened to flipping in Domblay. I mean, it's not guaranteed that a player coming straight from the French League is going to come and tear up the Premier League. That's a little bit um, naive to think that. But in general, he's not made any intonation that he wants to sign a DM. So he's clearly happy with McFred um, to a certain extent. He trusts them for whatever reason. And ultimately, McFred and the lack of playing system and styles of play is what's going to cost him his job. So again, maybe an illustration of what how poor of a judge of a character is in football players that he's picking those two guys and those are the reasons why he's going to get not have the job in the end. But it's a waste of opportunity, I think, going forward. And I'm really worried because I also don't trust the board to hire a coach, a manager who's going to do a good job or to give him the tools or the platform necessary for him to do a good job. The only positive I'd say with that is that because Oli's been in, we now have a football director, even though he's not good and not high level in that John Murto guy, he was around when David Moyes was around. He's not exactly, you know, a European finest. He's not the best in class as someone like a guy never would say, but again, he hasn't, he's been really quiet about that side of things. But <clears throat> I'm not I'm not confident that Glazers can go and select a right coach that's going to take us to the next level because there's part of me that thinks there's no ready-made option out there that's going to do that, right? <clears throat> if you go to a Conte, you have to change your philosophy and your player recruitment strategy straight away. He's, he's kind of basically um, a modern-day version of a Mourinho. So that probably might not be a good enough option. And then the other managers are more so a risk right because they they would need a lot of structure around them to bring the best out of them right you look at like a ten hag at ix he's not just a manager that's going to come in and just kind of you know tear up the rule book and do his thing straight away he still needs to have those processes around the structure similar how, he's, how he has in ix to bring that out the best in him and to obviously allow him to kind of play the football that he wants these teams to play so do I see those guys doing that? Probably not. I think they're going to do the same thing they did before, revert to type, get the best quote-unquote manager on paper, and then kind of hope signings are going to fix everything. I don't think that's the case. I think now, especially with the quality of the league and the standard of it, you just need to have better coaches. You need to have better players. You need, you know, you need to have better coaches. You need to have better styles of play. And obviously, some good players here and there. But for the most part, the coaching level, um, the tactics, all that sort of stuff needs to be of a right level. Even the player recruitment in terms of not only having to buy like 50 million players, 50 million plus players all the time sometimes maybe a couple of 20s and 10 and 30s just to kind of fill it fill in the, the squad and to make it more balanced or more, more well-rounded might be a good way to go about things i think but yeah we've got a lot of issues man we've got ronaldo for another year he's clearly not the ronaldo we knew and loved he's clearly diminished in some way shape or form or limited in his ability to influence the game he can obviously still finish in a box but in terms of him being an out and out quality player that he was before that's not the same so there's a lot of issues going on there Bruno Fernandes you know obviously Pogba this contract situation um it's a real shit show to be honest but you know what can you do man what can you do? The only good thing I think about it as well is Ronaldo. Clearly, if in the interview with Pogba after the game, you look obviously quite annoyed. But the Ronaldo clearly signing has influenced or affected how we are approaching management or the co or Oli's situation for sure. Um, the pressure that it puts on him to have a player like Ronaldo playing in that team, the fact that you know he play like that doesn't want to play in the Europa League, it goes to show that you know that signing was a blessing and a curse. A blessing, obviously, because he got one of the best players in the world, um, but a curse also because he is the profile of player that just demands title challenges and Champions League challenges and stuff, do you know what I mean? And at the moment, we're just so far away from that, it's not even funny, man. But hey, what can you do?